St. Mark chapter 1 and verse 1, and then we're going to skip a few verses after that. A few verses I'm going to read after verse 1. St. Mark chapter 1 and verse 1. It reads, The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Please take notice of the phrase, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then when you go to verse 14, it says, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. You see it again, gospel. And saying the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe what? The gospel. I want to share with you from this text the subject for today, the good news. Yes, come on, repeat it again, the good news. The Bible says in this text today that Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Now the word gospel comes from a Greek word, and I don't know if I'm going to pronounce it correctly, but I'm going to try it. Uh, Yoangelion, which means good tidings or good news. So the, the English that we see, or what we see in the text says gospel, it is translated as what? The good news. The good news of salvation through Jesus. The proclamation of the grace of God manifest and pledged in Christ. So the gospel, the gospel is the good news. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. The good news is that God has acted to save the perishing human race through the incarnation. The incarnation is when Jesus uh, the Son of God came forth in the flesh. So let me say it again. The good news is that God has acted to save the perishing human race through the incarnation, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I said in Sunday school this morning that God loves us so. God is so merciful. He's so concerned uh, that he did not have to let us live. He did not have to let the human race live. Adam and Eve, who were the forefathers, foreparents of the human race, they sinned against God. And God is such a holy God that he cannot tolerate sin. And, 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 and when you sin against him, the penalty is death. God could have wiped out the entire human race right then. But he loved us so. That's some kind of a love in it. His mercy stood up within it. Till he sent his son. Amen. To become the God man. He's 100% God and 100% man at the same time. To come and to die on the cross. And on the third day he rose again. That's good news y'all. I said that's good news. So whenever the gospel is proclaimed. The gospel is proclaimed through preaching and teaching and witnessing. Where, whenever the gospel is proclaimed in the power of the Spirit, it brings deliverance. When you really want deliverance to come, it has to come through the gospel. People today are suffering, I'm going to deal with a little of this in the message today, are suffering from different types of ailments, some of them being physical ailments, but more importantly, the emotional and mental ailments, and then we may say even spiritual ailments, spiritual trouble. Man has tried and all, he's tried so many different things to, to come up with solutions, to, to find answers to the problems of the world, and he does all that he does in his abilities, in his education and he yet fails but oh if man would accept the gospel if he would truly understand that it is good news 
Yes. Things would be so much better. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Come on, everybody, say amen. amen. As we look at St. Mark chapter 1, we read uh, verse 1, we read verse 14 and 15. But if you were to read the entire text, particularly from going on down to verse 21, the Bible tells us that Jesus went into Capernaum. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue and taught. Now, he, 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 I know preaching is a proclamation that, and, and teaching is a little bit different, but yet in his teachings, the good news came forth. Yes, the good news was shared, and people were astonished at his doctrine, at his teachings. Not only were the people astonished, but it stirred up even the devils, demons, because there was a man who was possessed with demon spirits. And the man began to cry out. I said the man, but actually it was the demon who cried out to Jesus, said, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? Did you see in the text it said, let us alone? Seemed like this was one demon that was speaking of several demons that were inside of this man. They recognized who Jesus was immediately. Are you come to destroy us? Because they understand, amen, that one day they're going to go into the eternal hell. They're going to go to the lake of fire with the devil and his angels. Somebody say amen. amen. What does Jesus do? He rebuked this demon. Amen. And commanded them uh, to come out of this man. Yes. The Bible listen though they came out and the man was delivered. Amen. Listen, the good news will do the same for man today. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Not all our people are possessed by demons. Many are oppressed. But before I go to oppression, amen, just as that man was possessed, I want to share something with you. Particularly my, my younger people here. Uh, sometimes you wonder, why does pastor, and why does the church preach against Beyonce and Snoop Dogg and, you know, the soul music, the R&B and the rap music. What you don't understand is that this music that is out there, it is uh, impressed or it is, what I'm, I'm trying to use the right word. It, let me just say this. And yeah, that's the word I want. Inspired by the devil. Amen. It is inspired by demon spirits. Amen. I was watching a video, a documentary, uh, just yesterday. And some of you all, I know the young folk, they've heard the name. And some of you older have heard the name Nicki Minaj. And, 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 and if, you, if you ever uh, hear anything she sing or you read the lyrics, she's foul now. Very nasty. Mm -hmm. Uh, in her lyric, but this is what she said. She was being interviewed, and and, and, and she said that uh, she was somewhere. I guess they were preparing for her to do a recording, and she said they they, they conjured up. This is the word she used. They conjured up demon spirits, and she said that uh, they entered into her. She said there is a boy that lives in me. Mm -hmm. And say the, that, that this boy causes me to say things that I don't want to say. In other words, she said that when she was on stage and she sent those nasty lyrics, that foul stuff that's coming out of her mouth, she said, I don't, even, I don't want to say these things. But, said, but I can't help myself. She said, I have asked him to leave. And he won't leave. She's telling you without her no doubt having the knowledge that we have in church about demonic uh, spirits and evil things. She's telling you there is something in me. There is something. There is an entity that has come in me and it is controlling my life. Yeah. Now to my young people and anybody else, why would you want to listen to such music? that is being inspired by demon spirits. Yes, yes. You see, the purpose of them inspiring the music of these individuals is to find a gateway to your soul. Amen. And you must understand that it's your eyes, your ears, and other things that are the gateway to your soul. Amen. You've got to protect your mind 
The mind is a part of the soul. You've got to protect what you hear. Yes. If they're inspired, just, I want y'all to think about something. Didn't we enjoy praise and worship today? Amen. All the praise team did a wonderful job. And through their singing, it usher in the presence of God. Yes. And many of us felt the presence of God in the room. Yes. Well, I want to tell you, just like you can sing and worship the presence of the Lord into a church, those other artists, such as Nicki Minaj and others who sing similar things, they can usher in or conjure demon spirits to come in. Amen. Again, to get within the mind, get within the soul, to cause you to do things you would not normally do. Come on, somebody out here that I say amen. amen. Come on and say amen. amen. Some of these people, hey amen, when they get ready to do a drive-by shooting. I didn't intend to get on this, but let me go on the fence. Now, some of them, when they get on, they, they do these drive-by shooting, they just shoot folk down. It, 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 it takes something to shoot it in the middle. And some of these guys have said that it's that some of some of the gang members and folks out there in the street said that that that, that it, it's not as easy as it would seem to you because we think of them as bad individuals to go out there and shoot a person. And this person testified against them, said that what we do, we get this music and we turn it up and we listen to it over and over and over again until we get pumped up. It allows us to go and just shoot folks down. I want y'all to know that demon spirits and the devil is real. You didn't know there's a real devil that's trying to destroy your soul. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on everybody say amen. amen. But let me tell you this. Uh, most of the folks who are in sin, not necessarily possessed by demons, and they're real where demons can talk, use your vocal cord. Most folks are not like that. But I find that many people are oppressed and influenced by demon spirits. Yes, yes. Now, let me explain something. People who are saved, I'm talking about saved for real, cannot be possessed by demon spirits. Amen. But saved folk can be oppressed. Yes. Come on, y'all. And unsaved folk who are not possessed, they are oppressed and influenced by the money force. Somebody say amen. amen. What does it mean to be oppressed? To be oppressed means to be burdened with cruel or unjust imposition. That means unjust pressures or demands. Uh, you are subject to a harsh exercise of authority. Are you listening to me today? So now that you are oppressed, and many of you who are sitting here today, whether you're saved or not, you are oppressed. Come on, say amen. amen. You are oppressed because through your oppression, you are now in dis distress and suppress. Suppress means that you feel defeat. Somebody here today, you feel defeat. You feel overpowered. You have tried to find the solution. You try to do better, but every time I try, to do better. Look like something knocks me back down. So now you feel defeated. You feel overpowered. And the devil wants you to believe there is no way out. He will tell you it will always be this way. Some of you parents today who have been praying for your children. Children are doing things that are breaking your heart. And it, it's really an oppression because it troubles you. It, it causes anguish. It causes pain. And the devil would tell you, you can always be this way. But the devil is alive. The devil is alive. Oh, in the praise and worship, I heard the Spirit of the Lord speaking to me about what he's getting ready to do for somebody. Lord, I thank you. So now he has you uh, and in seeing a helpless situation. Yes. Have you ever been in a place where your back was against the wall? Amen. Come on, y'all. Look like you're in a hole and, and you don't even see the light amen. at the top of the hole, the, at the end of the top. Somebody say amen. amen. You're experiencing, somebody here today, you're experiencing severe sadness. 
that, that oppression, suppression is leading you to a depression. And usually with depression, demons would talk to you about suicide. The devil talks to even saved folks about committing suicide. Come on, y'all. Come on, say amen. But the good news is Jesus came to set you free. Set you free. Yeah. Now clap your hand and give God a praise. Come on. Praise Him. Hallelujah. Well, in this text, in this text, just a few days earlier, I told you about in St. Mark chapter 10 about Jesus going to Capernaum and, and he delivered the man that was possessed by demon spirit. But a few days earlier, before he came to Capernaum, Jesus was in his hometown of Nazareth. Now that, that story is not recorded in Mark, but you can look at St. Luke chapter 14 because Jesus spoke these words. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel. What is the gospel? Say, what is the gospel? It's the what? The good news. Come on, heaven, say the good news. So he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had a lot of me to preach the, the gospel to the poor. Now the poor here are those that are afflicted, those that are hopeless, amen, helpless that I'm talking about. And Jesus goes on to say, he has sent me to heal the broken hearted. Broken hearted people are those that are broken, those that seem to have been crushed. Amen. Seems like you have been worn down. One writer said that when Jesus spoke of the broken heart, he was speaking to folk who are just like a path that has been walked over, walked on over and over again. You know, if you walk, walk on a piece of, of ground, you walk on that ground over and over again, the grass will not grow. The ground gets hard. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And then they won't produce any grass. And see, when you are broken hearted, and you're broken hearted consistently, the devil just keep walking over on you, over and over and over again, to stop you from having any production, to stop you from having any hope. But Jesus came to stop the enemy from walking on you, over and over again. Say amen, everybody. To preach deliverance to the captives. Yeah. Uh, some of you have been held hostage and the recovering of the blind, spiritual blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Jesus came to deliver you. Jesus came to heal. Oh, somebody get excited here. I said, Jesus came to heal. Why don't you tell God thank you? Come on and tell God thank you. And he read this from the book of Isaiah. Uh, he, 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 he did this before he went to Capernaum where he delivered the man uh, from the demon spirit. He, he was reading this in Nazareth. Uh, but, and it's quite interesting that after Jesus read this particular verse, uh, that the people at Nazareth rejected Jesus. Uh, as a matter of fact, they cast him out of the city. So Jesus leaves and goes to Capernaum. And in Capernaum, he finds a man that was possessed by demon spirits. And Jesus commanded the devil to go. I want to tell you this. I looked at that thing that troubled me because the Lord spoke and said, the good news has come. And so many people have rejected. Oh, you rejected what God is trying to do for you. Will y'all stay with me for a few minutes? I'm trying to get to a particular point. Yeah, we are preaching, we are teaching, uh, but why do you keep rejecting? Amen. Something that is for your good. Oh, uh, the word of the Lord tells us in, in, in the book of Revelation, said, uh, it speaks of Jesus. And he said, I stand at the door and I'm knocking, I'm knocking, I'm knocking. I'm standing at the door. If any man will open the door, I will come in and sup with him. In other words, Jesus said, you just let me in the door of your heart. I will come in and fellowship with you. And when I come in to fellowship with you, it's just like eating 
at the table. Have you, have you ever gone to a feast? Have you ever gone to a buffet? Amen. Where it's just laid out. Oh, you can eat any meat you want to eat. You can eat any vegetable that you want to. Any dessert that you all oh, it's just all oh, y'all. Anybody ever gone to a dinner like that? Have you ever been excited? Y'all ought to talk to me. Anybody been excited about dinner? Because you knew what you were going to eat? But think about what Jesus is saying. I want to sit down at the dinner table. Amen. With you. And on the table, there is joy. On the table, there is peace. On the table, there is love. And somebody here today, you've been searching for love in all the wrong places. But Jesus said, let me in so I can suck with you. Let me in so I have dinner with you. And I'm going to give you love. I'm to give you joy that the world cannot give you. I'm going to give you peace that nobody can take away. You ought to just lift your hand and shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. But oh, I'm going to be finished in a moment. Too many of us are rejecting the good news. Some of you are acting just like King Herod did in Mark chapter 14. Listen, Herod heard the gospel. He heard by John the Baptist. And the good news, you see, the good news, it'll show you your transgression. It'll show you your, your wrongdoing. And that's a good thing because the Spirit of God is trying to help you. Amen. Trying to bring you out of your mess, out of your stuff. And that's what was going on with, with King Herod. The good news told Herod, you're wrong, King, for having your brother's wife, Herodias. Now, Herod had gotten married he looked at his brother's wife. He had a brother by the name of Philip. Looked at his brother's wife, Herodias, and took the woman from him and married her. And John the Baptist said, you are wrong, brother. You are committing adultery. Come on, everybody. Come on and say amen. The Bible said that Herodias, his wife, had a horror against John the Baptist, meaning she disapproved of his preaching. Amen. And because of this, she convinced her husband, her new Some of you who are sitting here now, you, you in your in the back of your mind, you said, one day I'm gonna get saved. One day, but let me do this first. Let me go out and try this out first. Let me have a little bit more fun. You think you're having fun. Come on, y'all, come on, say amen. Many of you younger people think you're gonna live a long time. And you don't know, you don't know, you don't know when death is coming your way. You don't know what's the I told you about my wife, amen, that, that was involved in the accident. On, on Friday, praise God that, that, that it was not any worse than it was and, and that they're doing well. <laughs> Amen. But, but one person told me, said, listen, as fast as that man was going, he could have pushed that car into the back of other cars. And, uh, the damage could have been even worse. But I'm trying to get you to, to really see that when this service is over, uh, you plan to get in your little cars and to go home. But there is no guarantee that you're going to make it home. You might run into the drunk driver. Come Come on, everybody. You might run into, amen, or the person that's on the cell phone that is taking the eyes off the road. They run into you. Come on, y'all. Come on. Amen. You could lose your life today. Oh, you plan to get saved, amen, a few years later when you get older. But you don't know how long you have. And so you play the, the game of procrastination. And that, that's what King Herod was. He knew that John was right. The Spirit of the Lord was moving upon him because of the good news, but he procrastinated. Oh my God. And, and listen, I want to tell you, when you procrastinate, you're postponing the decision. 
decision to follow Jesus. Yeah. And a postponed decision has a good chance of being no decision. With the final outcome of being in, being in hell for eternally. And if you go to hell, there is no way out. If you go to hell, it's a terrible place. It is a place of torment. My God. It is a place Thank you. 
Use 
committing adultery. The lonely life cast can find love. The abused child can be healed. The abused wife can be delivered.